Really hitting it big as a player in the National Football League is one of the toughest things on earth to do even if you've got every means to be successful. Even when we're talking about just getting to the NFL, when looking at all of the Power 5 conferences with the SEC, ACC, Pac-12, Big 10, and Big 12, which account for over 90% of players drafted from year to year, those players that train their entire life still only end up with about a 1 in 10 chance that they end up selected in the draft just based on the scarcity of picks alone. Now after expanding our group to the entirety of the NCAA, how many players drafted in the last 20 years would you guess didn't start in a game of 11 on 11 football until their third year of college? Well, until the 2018 draft, that number was a solid zero. But fortunately, despite the incredible odds every player has stacked against them, it's not like you're just drawing numbers out of a hat with probability. Like in any merit-based system, there's a way to increase your odds of being taken, whether that's with the best training in the world since you were five years old, or blazing your own trail entirely. So that brings me to the topic of today's video in Leighton Van Der Esch, who's from a town in Idaho that's population is so small, the NFL itself has four times as many players as it has citizens. But time and time again in professional football, it seems like the player that has the biggest chip on their shoulder is the one who finds the most success. And so far, Van Der Esch has used that small town work ethic that's been instilled in him to soar to new heights with the Dallas Cowboys. So before we get into his incredible story, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on for this channel. I post a new video on a different player or topic every single week, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Now to get into it, let's go to the very start of Van Der Esch's journey from playing high school football on a field lit by the headlights of pickup trucks, all the way to playing every Sunday for the most recognized team in America. This is Riggins, Idaho, population 406. In a town like that, there are usually two prevailing things you learn from the very start of living there. The importance of your community, and the necessity of working hard for every single thing that you own. Leighton Van Der Esch, which is a Dutch name if you're wondering, grew up in a tightly knit family with three older sisters. They were all a competitive group, and they'd all grew up to play sports in college later in their lives. There was plenty to do for kids who loved to be active. Running mountains, rafting, fishing, snowmobiling in the winters, you name it, they had the land for it. As Leighton grew up, his father taught him the value of being your own driving force to get what you want, and he quickly grew an appreciation for taking things into his own hands, whether that was fixing his car or lifting weights in his spare time. Growing up in a small area like that where everyone knows everyone, Van Der Esch's graduating class had 11 people in it, so there was no activity around the city that he wasn't a part of. He'd inevitably end up playing pretty much every sport his school had to offer, and after shooting up to 6'4", none of them were really a challenge for him to completely dominate. Despite putting up averages of nearly 30 points and 11 rebounds on the basketball court, the area he really excelled in was on the football field. The teams in the area didn't consistently have enough players for full-on 11-on-11 football, so games were played with 8 players on each side, with most guys playing multiple positions throughout the game. Playing quarterback and linebacker at that time, Van Der Esch still credits a significant amount of his football instincts to playing in those eight-man games, as each play is less crowded and typically requires really sound open field pursuit and fundamentals in order to make each and every stop. While his natural speed and athleticism gave him the ability to stop those plays from opposing teams, racking up 131 tackles and 10 turnovers, the defenses against him weren't so lucky. Let's just say that as a quarterback in his senior year, he accumulated 3,700 total yards and 62 total touchdowns through 12 games, which is an average of over 300 yards and 5 touchdowns in every game, and I just feel so bad for those players that were against him. Despite obliterating all of the competition in his high school years, due to his small school, he was only given an offer to play linebacker at Boise State as a walk-on player. He needed to take time to adjust to 11 on 11 and put on the weight that he really needed to compete at the college level, since as soon as he arrived, he quickly acquired the nickname Baby Giraffe in the Boise State locker room for his lanky frame. Pretty soon though, he'd put on nearly 30 pounds in just his freshman year, and in the process he'd upgrade his neck from Baby Giraffe to one that I'd say resembles a Clydesdale at this point. At any rate though, despite an injury in his sophomore year, Van Der Esch quickly materialized into the top linebacker in the Mountain West the very next season. After learning techniques through his first two years, he'd go on a tear in his first season as a starter, racking up the fifth most tackles in the FBS with 141 alongside six forced turnovers, earning him a nod as Conference Defensive Player of the Year. In his final two games of that season, he really made his name known, as he was credited with 28 total tackles, completely dominating in both the Conference Championship and Bowl game for Boise State. All the while through that season, he had the full support of his hometown of Riggins, and many people traveled three hours to every home game on a party bus that Van Der Esch's father had themed around his son. Though it was only his first year as a full-time starter, and there were some durability concerns, LVE had also now earned the attention of NFL scouts for his natural versatility at weak side linebacker. 
he was not only an aggressive blitzer, but also excellent in coverage, with good speed from sideline to sideline. He was quick to the hole and showed instinct in his decision making despite his relative inexperience. And what's more was the legendary work ethic that he'd used to build himself into an NFL caliber linebacker so quickly. After his explosive 2017 campaign concluded, he declared for the upcoming NFL draft with the support of his hometown and his family fully behind him as he went on to take his career to the next level. While there would be developmental work necessary in order to adjust to the pro game, no one was doubting the physical ability he brought to the table. His vertical jump and broad jump numbers recorded at the combine placed him in the top tier at his position, and coupling that with a 4.6540 time and above average times in the shuttle and three cone drills, and Van Der Esch became one of the fastest rising defensive players in the draft, and was very soon projected to be a first round selection. After a number of team visits had passed, the night of the draft arrived, and Van Der Esch was taken with the 19th overall pick in the first round by the Dallas Cowboys. While some fans thought the pick was a bit of a reach, considering the team had a massive needed wide receiver, Dallas saw LVE as a player they could slot directly into their defensive scheme, and with a mentor as great as Sean Lee, there was really no ceiling to his potential with the Cowboys. Despite today's NFL becoming more and more pass-happy by the second, Van Der Esch could play both the role of run-stopper and coverage backer, making him a three-down player in an era where that's becoming considerably less common. Now nicknamed the Wolf Hunter for his background growing up, Van Der Esch took off from the only place he'd known in Idaho for the Lone Star State. Right off the bat after his wheels touched down in Dallas, the pressure was on though, as even though Van Der Esch was poised to grow alongside Sean Lee and fellow linebacker Jalen Smith, immediately after he was drafted he already started drawing comparisons to the great Brian Erlacher for the way he used his length to get to the ball carrier. With that kind of a comp, the stage was already brightly lit for Van Der Esch to compete for a starting role within the Cowboys' really solid defensive unit. After training camp, he would eventually be named backup middle linebacker behind Jalen Smith, but he gained valuable insight on pre-snap reads and the speed of the NFL from Sean Lee in particular. Unfortunately, just three weeks into the regular season, Lee would end up going down with an injury, requiring Van Der Esch to step up into his place in the lineup. He was able to make an immediate impact, racking up 30 total tackles within his first three NFL starts. He silenced the people who had doubted his ability with explosive play off the ball and his sure tackling skills, quickly becoming a backbone to the Cowboys defense that would eventually get them turned around from a 3-5 start to the season. Despite only starting in 11 games on the year, he set a new franchise record as the fastest player to reach 100 tackles in just week 12. When Sean Lee was ready to return from injury late in the season, he even stepped aside to allow Van Der Esch to continue his growth as a linebacker, and he continued to outperform expectations all year long. He'd go on to have five double-digit tackling performances on the season, including a Week 9 win against Philadelphia, where he earned NFC Defensive Player of the Week for his 13 solo tackles and one interception. He'd finish the season with the third most tackles in the entire NFL, trailing only fellow rookie Darius Leonard and Blake Martinez with 140 on the year, quickly setting a new franchise record for a rookie. The impact Van Der Esch has made on the Cowboys' defense far surpassed what anyone expected from the Boise State product, and he'd be named to the Pro Bowl along with being recognized as Pro Football Focus's fourth highest graded player among all linebackers. Unfortunately, the year didn't end on much of a high note for the Cowboys, being gashed by the Rams in the playoffs for 273 rushing yards in an uncharacteristically poor defensive performance. And with an end to the season like that, Van Der Esch knows there's no room for complacency even after the incredible progress he made in his rookie season. He's continuing to learn from one of the best mentors in the NFL, and after seeing the ways in which he needs to improve in order to truly ascend to be one of the NFL's elite defensive talents, there's no telling what the next few years look like for the Wolf Hunter in Dallas. But if his personal track record from Riggins, Idaho, all the way to America's team is any indication, it's starting to look like a lot more than just wolves are about to be in danger.